Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for allowing us to come in your presence once again. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would strengthen us in this season. We ask in the precious name of Jesus that you would give us guidance and direction. We ask that you would wash us and that you would purge us and that you would sanctify us for your glory and for your honor and for your praise. We give your name glory right now and we give your name praise. In Jesus' name, amen and praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We prepare ourselves for Bible study and for the word of the Lord that God has for us in this season. We welcome you to our time of the study of the word, word on Wednesday. And we pray that the word that God has for us that it will bless and change our very lives because it is, our, it is our endeavor to give you what thus saith the Lord. And we say this over and over and over again, but it's still yet true. It is time for us as God's people to seek his face like never before. And the enemy attacks us in our prayer life and in the continuation of our prayer life. And some of you may even be tired of me saying that same thing over and over again. Tired of me making that same declaration over and over again. But the only way we're going to have spiritual victory is that we have a developed and a continued prayer life and that we stay in the face of God for a move of God and for the direction of God because we must make our decisions and our choices in prayer and the only way we're going to be strengthened to respond in a Christ manner because the enemy is a coming against all of our flesh He's coming against all of us to get over in the flesh and over in the, in the wrong mind and over in the wrong thinking so he can distract us from the full will of God for our lives. God has called us to a place of walking in the fullness of God's word and in the fullness of God's will. So we must understand that the attack that we're in has come to pull us out of the place where God wants us to be. We got to know that Satan's attack and his plan, it is calculated. I'm going to say that one more time. Satan's attack and his plan, it is calculated. I want you to begin to, 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 to look at the things that have come against you in the last few days. Understand that there was a calculation against you. There was an assignment against you. And it's not by accident that situations come back to back to back and they match one another. Satan is the master of manipulation. He's the master of patterns. He studies your patterns and then he creates a temptation or his, his demons create a temptation in order to get you out of the will of God. But when we pray, Satan's attack will not work. His agenda, his plan, his assignment, and what Satan is trying to do, it will not work when we get into the place of prayer that God has called us to. Somebody, wherever you are and whatever you may be doing, just begin to say out of your spirit, it will not work. And the reason that it will not work is because you're going to find a place of continual prayer. I have to continually say it because we got to continually pray. Let us continue. 
continue in prayer. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. Men should always pray. So there's a need for consistent prayer. We have we were taught the example of a, having a prayer life through our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. He taught us how to pray. He taught us to pray. He showed his disciples what it is to have a continued prayer life. And so right now, understand this. Whatever your level of prayer is, whatever manner you pray in, God has called you to pray. He's called you to prayer. It's not just certain people in the church. It's just not just your mom and them praying, but you got to develop a continued prayer life in God. You got to develop this prayer life that you are praying daily and meditating on his word daily. Daily, Satan gets us because we don't have patterns. We don't we, we, we don't have good habits. And so he can defeat us in certain areas because our habits are weak in that area. So we must learn how to pray. Now, where we've been at, and God has, God has instructed me to continually talk about prayer. So whenever I mount the pulpit or whenever I do uh, uh, teaching, I got to teach on prayer until God switches me over. So right now, what we're doing, we are talking about prayer and we're using the tabernacle as a way for us to get into the presence of God. One of the things we must understand is this. Prayer is not convincing God to do what we want him to do. Prayer is not convincing God to do what we want him to do. Prayer is for us to get into the presence of God and for God either to reveal unto us his will or for him to shape us in the form and develop us that we will seek the will of God and say, God, whatever your will is, you do it. Or like our Savior said, not my will, but thy will be done. So we must get into the presence of God, get into the place where God is. So, and that's our ultimate goal, is to get into the holies of holies where we lose all flesh and flesh is out of the way, where we lose all, all soulless realm and all of our emotions is out of the way and we're in the place where God can speak to us, where we have messed up. We are making decisions in the flesh and in our through our undelivered emotions and our undelivered intellect. And we are missing God and missing the mark and messing up everything in our lives because everything that we do is based upon either the flesh or our emotions. The flesh and our emotions. We must learn how to make our decisions based upon our prayer life Second, and our word life first. So the combination of studying the word and in prayer, that's how we should make our decisions as believers. Now, as we go talk about the tabernacle in the wilderness, as Moses was revealed unto Moses, God revealed unto him, gave him specific instructions on how to develop the tabernacle. Now, when they came to the tabernacle, the tabernacle had a gate. It had an entryway. And what God is revealing unto us through his entryway, that we should enter his gates with thanksgiving. If you go to Psalms 1 and 4, we should enter his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. So when we enter the tabernacle, we must enter in with thanksgiving. We must enter in with praise. 
We must enter in prayer with thanksgiving. So when you pray, we always got to come before God with a praise. And we know this. Come before him with a praise. And we see this in the Lord's prayer when he says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So when I enter into prayer, I have to enter in recognizing God is my Father. And I must enter in with praise and with thanksgiving. I must enter in with giving God the praise. So when you come to God in prayer, that we, we got to come to him saying, Father, I thank you for another day. God, I thank you for allowing me to be in your presence. God, I thank you for your blood shed on Calvary. God, I thank you for every blessing that you've given me. God, I thank you that you saved my soul. God, I thank you that you're healing my body. So pray, as we enter into prayer, we're not entering into prayer asking God for things and asking God for stuff, but we're entering into prayer giving him praise and giving him thanksgiving. We must enter into prayer by lifting up the name of Jesus and glorifying God in prayer. We must enter into prayer with thanksgiving. We must come before God with praise. So pray, you, and, and I say this all the time, you cannot pray unless you praise. You cannot pray unless you praise. It is an importance that every believer understands that it is a necessity to be a prayer warrior, an intercessor, or just a child of God talking to God. You got to be a praiser. It is important that you learn how to praise God. And sometimes in life, you, you got situations that you don't feel like praising him. You got circumstances you don't feel like giving God the glory. You got such, but, but, but you got to learn how to bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So when I enter into prayer, regardless of what I'm going through, I got to learn how to praise Hallelujah, God. We bless your name. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. God, I say thank you. God, I say glory. Because what praise do, it, it takes you to the place where God has called you to. You cannot go through prayer with, without praise. And not only in the entry of prayer or the beginning of prayer, all the way through your prayer time, you got to bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. We have misunderstood prayer, that prayer is just God give me this, God do this, God give me this. God is not your slave. God is the God of the universe, and he deserves the praise, but God will move for a praiser. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. God will move for praise because he inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise God, his heaven comes down. His glory comes down. That word says God inhabits. It, 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 it also can be interpreted. He enthrones. That means his throne, his heavenly authority moves in our lives. So when we praise God, God, he moves in our situation. He comes and take up residence in the midst of our situation because he inhabits the praises of his people. Now, let's go on um, in the word of God. He inhabits the praise. So, so we got to come before God in praise. We got to come before God with a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, after you go into praise, the next place you got to go, you have to find yourself in a place of repentance. You have to find yourself in a place of repentance. You have to find yourself where you, where you see that you are a sinner and you repent for anything you've done wrong and anything that's in your flesh that you are doing. Anything that's in your flesh that you're doing, 
that you need God to deliver you from, you need to lay it on the altar. Because you're finding yourself at the brazen altar, a place of repentance and a place of sacrifice. And in that Jesus has already offered the sacrifice of our sins. We can only offer the sacrifice of our bodies unto God. We must offer unto God a sacrifice of our bodies. So in prayer, you come, you already praised him. Now we at the point in at God, I bring myself to the altar. I lay myself on the altar and whatever your habit is, whatever your struggle is, this is the time that you say, make up in your mind, I'm turning away from sin because repentance is turning away from sin, coming to God. So at this time as a believer, we must confess our sins. So whatever our sin is, whatever our struggle is, whatever our habit is, whatever things that we've done today that we need God to deliver us from, this is the time in prayer that we repent. And this becomes a person, your personal prayer time. I'm not talking about what we do when we stand up in church and pray and when we publicly pray, when we pray corporately. What I'm talking about, I'm dealing with your personal prayer prayer life where you where you understand that's something in me that I need deliverance from. It even may be some people you need to forgive because even as we expect God to forgive us, we have to forgive others according to the scripture and God knows it's hard to do. But with the help of God, God will help you do it and you become, let's go to our text, you become a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You become the sacrifice. I lay myself on the altar because there's some stuff in me that I yet need God to burn out of me. There's some things in me I yet need God to change. There's some areas in my life that I yet need deliverance from. So I'm repenting and I'm confessing. I'm repenting and I'm confessing. I'm renouncing. I'm saying this part of my life, I need God to help me. I need God to help me in this part of my life. There's a part of me that yet needs to die. There's a habit I cannot break. There's something I cannot stop doing. It may be pride. You may be proudful. You may be living in pride and think you're better than other people or think you, you're more than other people or you're greater than other people. You may be living in pride. So whatever it is, it may be an addiction, a habit that you cannot break. In prayer, you need to lay it on the altar. See, see, we, we, we think prayer, God give me this, God give me that. That's not how prayer works. Prayer comes to change you. I need God to change me. I need God to do a work on me. So in this point of prayer, I must identify myself. I have some things in my flesh that needs deliverance. I have some things in my emotions that needs deliverance. I have some things that in my understanding that I walk around in pride and think I'm better than somebody else. That I need a deliverance in my life. I need God to change me. And no matter how long you've been saved, you got some things you still need deliverance from. You got some things God's still working on. And until you develop that time in prayer, your flesh is going to be out of control. Your emotions, I'm talking to somebody right now, your emotions are going to be out of control. But when we learn to get our, flat, our prayer life in line, it's going to help us to bring our bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto, unto God and not being conformed to this world, but be transformed. So that's what happens on the altar, on the brazen altar. The, the, the sacrifice is transformed from a living being and is burnt until it becomes ashes. A lot of us, we have situations in our lives that is still alive. Our flesh is still alive. 
that, 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 that lying spirit is still alive. And we got to pray it down and pray it under the blood and pray it into deliverance. And the only way we're going to get victory is through the power of prayer. We have misunderstood prayer and think prayer is a Christmas list. Prayer is a place where God wants to deliver you because some things God cannot put new wine in the old wine skins. So what God has to do, he has to burn out of you. He has to renew you. He has to kill that old wine skin and give you something new to put in the new thing he wants. Some of the things we're praying for and believing God for, God can't give it to us. Why? Because you ain't ready for it yet. Hallelujah. You ain't ready for it yet. Hallelujah. You ain't ready for it. So God can't give. It's not that God ain't able. God is able to do it, but you are not ready. And the thing that's going to prepare you for what God has for you is your prayer life. Continually praying and seeking the face of God. Hallelujah. So I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And at this place, it is a place of repentance. Whatever you need God to work on you, you can't go in the Father. Don't even think about going to a holy place. Don't even think about going in the Father. Don't even think about going to another level until you deal with some things in your flesh. Some of you right now need to get a list and start writing. This is my issue in my flesh. My flesh is out of control. My, 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 my tongue is out of control. I may, I, I'm, I'm saying anything. I, you know, I'm, I'm letting everything come out of my mouth. I'm not, I'm, I'm letting everything come in my life and my flesh is out of control. But when I understand what God is doing, preparing me for and what God is conditioning me for is only going to come through a prayer life. It's only going to come through seeking the face of God. It's only going to come through a relationship with God. We got to pray in this season. Now let me go on a little bit further. So 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 we understand we come in with thanksgiving. We have about that part. Then we got to come to the altar. Something got to die. There has to be a sacrifice. Jesus has already offered the sacrifice, but we got to offer the sacrifice of our bodies becoming holy and acceptable unto God. We got to put ourselves on the altar. So at this point, whatever's in you that's not in side line with the word of God, can I hold the Bible up? That's not in line with the word of God, whatever's in you that's not in line with the word of God, you got to break it in the name of Jesus and walk in obedience unto God's word and unto God's deliverance. Now let's go farther. As we go, as we look at the word of God, the first article in the, the, the first um, uh, piece of furniture, if you want to call it that, in the tabernacle was the brazen altar. It was a place of sacrifice. It was a place of burning. It was a place of death. It was a sacrifice. And we praise God that Jesus offered a sacrifice so we don't have to die. He was the lamb slain for our sins. The only thing that we have to offer is our bodies as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable on the brazen altar. But as we go farther, after the brazen altar, you will find the laver where the priest washed his hands and his feet, preparing himself to go to the the the, the inner court. Um, and but he had to wash his hands and to wash his feet. This was a time of preparation. This was a time that God would prepare his people with. For um, the, the, to go deeper into the, the sacrifice and ultimately to the holy place. So they had to wash. 
This labor was made of brazen. Um, it, it, was, it was it was made uh, of, of brass, just as the the altar was. It was a brazen. Also, it was also made of a lesser um, element than the rest of the things going on beyond. Uh, it was made, and it also was made of mirrors, so the priest could could be a reflection. So this point of washing, not only did the priest wash himself, but he also saw himself as a reflection. Us as the people of God, we must understand that at this point of our Christian lives, there is a place in prayer, there is a place of washing and cleansing. There is a place of washing and cleansing and reflection. We've already repented, but now you got to see yourself. And most of us don't go to this place in prayer where we see ourselves and we wash ourselves. That must be a purification and a washing. The Bible says unto us, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he may present himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So at this point of prayer, we'll find ourselves at a place of washing, a place of of purification, a place of cleansing, a place of purifying ourselves, and a place of washing ourselves. This labor of water was a place of true reflection. So what we want to understand is where God desires to wash us at. God desires, first of all, and we're going to deal with these um, things that God wants to do in our lives. God desires to wash us and to purify, at this point of prayer, purify our minds. So yes, I have repented. Yes, I have became a living sacrifice. But now I must purify my mind. If we would go into the word of God to Philippians 4 and 8. Philippians 4. Four and eight. And we're going to deal with the washing process. We understand everything in this world needs to be washed. Your clothes needs to be washed. First of all, your body needs to be washed. Hallelujah. Um, your, 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 you need to, we have to wash our cars. We have to wash our dishes. We have to wash. So washing is a necessity. What kind of dirty, filthy world would this be if none of us ever washed again. If we never washed our clothes, if we never washed our bodies, we never washed our hair, we never washed any, every, everything in our lives. We just walked around with dirt and nasty and filthy and filthy and our kitchens will be nasty, our homes will be nasty, everything will be filthy. What kind of world, diseased world we live in? What, and my question is, what kind of diseased mind do you have if you are not allowing the washing of the water by the word. God help us today, Jesus. We got to wash our minds. So in Philippians 4 and 8, it says, Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, come on now, whatsoever things are honest, thank you, Jesus, Whatsoever things are just and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. We got to watch our very minds because our minds are being bulldozered with all kind of things right now. So much stuff coming against our minds, so much stuff coming against our thinking, so much stuff coming against us. Our minds, we are about to lose it 
because of the pressure, the pressure that's upon our minds, the pressure that's upon our thinking, the pressure that's upon our lives, the pressure that's upon us, that's pushing us down. Our minds are, 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 are in a battle. And then our minds are not focusing on pure things, amen, true things, honest things, just things, and lovely things, and things of a good report. Our minds are corrupt. So at this point, we got to wash our minds. How are we going to wash our minds? Through the word of God. By you studying the word of God, you have to wash our minds. And this is what I want us to get understand when it comes to prayer. We have to know that prayer is more than just a few words we say before we eat. Prayer has to become a lifestyle. When you sit down and study the word and meditate on the word, that is also your prayer time. We must understand that when we study this word and whatever we wash our minds with and whatever we put in our minds is going to affect how our minds operate. Oh God, help us today, Jesus. It's going to affect how our minds operate. It's going to affect how our minds think. It's going to affect how our minds process things. Because if we take it to, if we take it to um, your 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 house, if you take it to somebody's house and you never clean your house, you never get rid of stuff, and you just keep everything and you just get everything and anything come by, you get it. And and, and, and you have and, and your mind, you have become a spiritual hoarder in your mind because you're never purging out and cleaning out your mind. You're never sanctifying your mind. You're never removing things from your house. You're never taking things out of your house. You're never changing. Sometimes in our spiritual life, we just need to learn how to change some things and rearrange some things and remove some things and, and, and switch some things around. We need to clean out of our minds and, 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 and our thinking is wrong because all we got in our mind is what's the latest, latest gossip um, what's going on, on on the news and, and, and it's not saying that those things are not important but they should not Take any level of control of your mind. Or they should not be for priority. They should not take priority in your thinking. Yes, we should be concerned about what's going on, on in the news because that teaches, gives us how we should pray. We should be concerned about what's going on in our family because that gives us what to pray when we go to the place of intercession. But right now, we got to clean our minds from dirty and filthy things and the things that the enemy will try to come against your thinking. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. So if Satan can contaminate your mind, he can contaminate you. So, in this part of prayer, we must ask God, wash my mind. Thank you, Jesus. We got to ask God, wash my mind. Purify my mind. Purge my mind. Sanctify my mind. Deliver my mind. I need my mind to be washed. And I need the mind of Christ. I need God to wash my mind. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to wash our minds. We ask you to purify our thinking. God, anything in our minds that's contaminated, anything in our mind that will bring any destruction to where you're taking us to and what you're trying to develop in us, Father, wash our minds today in the name of Jesus. Wash our minds, God. Wash our minds, God. Purify Purify our thoughts, oh God. Give us the right thinking. Wash us, God, in the name of Jesus. Yea, glory to God. Hallelujah. Wash our minds from all pure, unpure thoughts. 
Wash our minds from all unpure thoughts, all unpure thinking. I need God to wash my very mind today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wash me, oh God. Not only do I need God to wash my mind, but I need God to purify and to wash my ears. I, what I hear. The Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We need the Holy Ghost and in prayer, we need God to sanctify our ears. Why? Because our ear is the way we hear from God. And you cannot clearly hear from God when your ears are not pure. The Bible says in John, St. John, the 10th chapter and the 5th verse, it says, a, And a stranger, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger." We must understand that the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. We are the sheep of God. Remember, we became a living sacrifice. We are the sheep of God. Jesus became our sacrifice and now our bodies became a living sacrifice. We are the sheep of God. We're supposed to know the voice of God. We're supposed to know what God is saying in this season. We're supposed to know what thus saith the Lord is. We're supposed to hear and know what God is saying in this season. We are the sheep of God and we're supposed to know the voice of God. We should hear and know his voice. We should hear and know his voice. My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So in this point of prayer, we need to ask God, wash my mind. Wash my mind, God. In this point of prayer, we need to ask God, wash my ears so I can hear you, God. Wash my mind, wash my ears so I can hear you. God wants to take you to a new level in prayer. He wants to take you to a new relationship and he wants to give you victory in your life. But the, but, but, but the standard and the pattern God has shown, given us to victory is through prayer. The Bible says this. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from my wicked ways. Then will I heal the land. Then will I hear from heaven. And then will I heal the land. In this season, let's learn how to repent. Let's learn how to come before God with praise. Let's learn how to come before him with thanksgiving. Let's learn how to come before God telling him thank you. And then let's learn how to repent and lay ourselves on the altar. Asking God to forgive us from all sins. Asking God to purify us. Asking God to to, 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 to help us to give our bodies as a living sacrifice. Asking him to sanctify us and to purify us. In the name of Jesus. Let, let us go before God in prayer. We're going to continue to study on later. But let us go to God in prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We give your name praise, oh God. And we give your name honor. We thank you for your blood right now that was shed on Calvary. We thank you right now for victory in every area of our lives. 
We thank you right now for even what's going on in the society and in this world. We yet believe that you're able and you can deliver. We thank you because you are our God of deliverance. We thank you that you are our God of victory. And we know that the only way we have victory is through you, Jesus. Hey, glory to God. The only way we're going to have answers is through you, God. So we thank you right now for you being the God that we need in this season. We trust no one else but you, God. We lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways we acknowledge you. Because we know you should direct our path and we praise you for being our direction. We praise you for being our God. Father, right now we repent, oh God, for all sins known and unknown. Every sin of deed, thought, or speech. We repent right now. We repent for not praying as we should. We repent for not being in your word like we should. God, we repent for the words that we said that was not good. Father, we repent right now for the deeds that we've done that was out of your will. God, we repent for every thought out of our shit, and we lay ourselves on the altar. We lay our habits on the altar. We lay our conditions on the altar, God. And we repent right now, Jesus. We repent, oh God. Oh, we lay it on the altar, God, and we turn from our wicked ways. We turn from our sinful ways. We repent to being prideful. Hallelujah, God. We repent for, for being covered in this. We repent for wanting what not belong to us. We repent for anything that we took outside of your will. We repent, oh God, for everything that we said that was against a man or woman of God. We repent, oh God, for all sins known and unknown, God. And we ask you for your forgiveness right now. We ask you for your forgiveness right now. Father, we don't want to be out outside of your will. We don't want to be outside of your plan. We don't want to be outside of what you call us to do. So right now God, we repent, oh God. Right now, God, we ask for forgiveness. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we lay it on the altar, God. And I will say hallelujah, hallelujah. And Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would wash us, God. Wash our minds, God. Wash our thoughts, God. And I'm also, wash our wash our words, God. And I'm also, watch our wash our intentions, God. Oh God. Wash us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wash us, Lord. Hallelujah. Wash us, God. And I'm also, okay. Wash us, Jesus. And I'm also, wash us, God. And I'm also, okay. Wash us, God. Wash us, God. Wash us, God. And I'm also, Say hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Wash our words. Wash our ears. Wash our minds with your word today. Purify us, God. Purify us, God. Has your people let us walk in purity? Has your people let us walk in holiness? Has your people, God? Let us walk in righteousness. Wash us, Jesus. Wash us, God. Wash us, God. Hallelujah. Wash us. Hallelujah. Purify us, God. Sanctify us, God. We want to be, be, we want to be believers in your will. We want to be holy, God. God, we don't want our form of godliness and denying the power thereof. But, oh, God, we want to be holy, God. And Father, right now, we intercede for this nation. We intercede for this country. We intercede for this generation. Oh, God, we need you, Lord. We need you, God. Father, we need you. Father, we need you. Father, we need you in this hour, God. We need you right now, Jesus. We need you right now, God. In the, in the midst of a battle, God, in the spirit realm, we need victory, God. We need peace, God. We need holiness, God. We need direction, God. We bind up every force of the enemy. 
We bind up every agenda of Satan. We bind up every lie of the devil. And God, we release, we release, release your victory. We release your strength. We release your power. We release your favor. We release your peace over your people, God. And God, we pray. Let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. We pray for the will of God. We don't even put our choice on the line. But God, whatever your will is, hallelujah. Whatever your plan is, hallelujah. Whatever you want to do, God. We accept, hallelujah, the will of God. And I'm going to say, we accept, hallelujah, the will of God. I'm going to say, we accept, hallelujah, the will of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Rabosia. Mando Rosi, Anamonia. Here are Mando Rosi, Mando Roca. Read a Robo Sikitabasa. Mando Robo Sidabas. Hey, oh, glory, your will, God, your will, your will, your will, your will, your will, God. Your will, God. Your will, God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, God. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. We thank you for the will of God. We thank you for the will of God. Ah, uh, we thank you for the will of God. Thank you for the will of God. Oh, the will of God, the will of God, the will of God. Yes, the will of God. The will of God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the will of God. We trust you. Father, we trust you right now. Father, every individual that has illnesses in their bodies, every individual that has illnesses in their body, we trust you right now for you moving and touching. We trust you right now that you bring deliverance in bodies in the name of Jesus. Father, those right now that are struggling to have peace in their home, I pray right now to give them peace. Those that have struggled to have mental peace in their mind, I praise God for mental peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that you would give us direction even concerning the virus, even concerning where we should go. Let us stay in safe places. Keep our bodies healed. Keep our minds regulated. Keep our spirits lifted. Keep us in a place of deliverance. Keep us in a place of victory. Father, right now there's unrest in this nation. There's unrest in our homes. And Father, we need you. We need you, oh God. We need you, God. We need you, God. Oh, we need you, Lord. Oh, we need you, God. We need you, God. Yes, God. We need you, God. Hallelujah. We need you, God. And I will say, hey, oh, we need you, God. Hallelujah. We need you, God. Glory. We need you. We need you, God. We need you. We need you. And I will say, hey, da, 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 da. we need you, Lord. Hey, we need you, Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. We need you, Lord. I will say, we need you, we need you, God. Ah, oh, we need you, God. Every circumstance, we give it to you, Jesus. Every situation, we lay it on the altar. Everything, we give it to you, God. God, that's weights, hallelujah, that's trying to weigh your people down. That's weights, hallelujah, that's trying to weigh your people down. So right now, God, we give you our burdens. 
We give you our weight. Father, we pray you pray right now that the weight of the situations will not destroy us. But God, give us the strength in this season to stand against them. Give us the strength in this season to stand in the place you called us to. Give us the strength in this season to be the vessel you called us to. Father, right now, we lay every weight on the altar. God, and I will shout. Hey, God, and we ask you to wash us. Wash us, God. Wash us. Let us see ourselves in this season. And any weight that we bring on ourselves, let us see it. Any weight that we're bringing on ourselves, allow us to see it. Every weight that we are bringing on ourselves, allow us to see it. Allow us to see the burden that we carry by choice. Let us see ourselves in prayer. Show us ourselves, God. Show us ourselves, God. Whatever thing that we're doing that's pulling us out of the will of God, show us ourselves, God, in prayer. Show us, God. Let us see ourselves. Let us wash us. Let us be washed. Let us be washed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read it up on the Rosa. 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 Wash us, God. Wash us. Right now, while we're in the presence of the Lord, allow Him to wash you. Whatever God shows you in yourself, allow God to wash you. God should be showing you something in yourself. We can only see other people. You're not, you're not in prayer like you should. God, show us myself. Don't only show me my wrong, but God, help me correct my wrong through your word. Father, we lay ourselves on the altar and we ask you to what the work that you have begun today, the work you have begun today in prayer, the work you have begun in prayer today, I believe you right now that you're going to continue it. You started something today in prayer. You're taking us to a place of washing. God, we thank you that you're going to purify us. We want to be that vessel that you want to use. Oh, God, wash me. Oh, God, wash me. I want to be clean. I want to be pure. I want to be sanctified. I want to be holy. I want God to wash me. I want God to purify me. I want to be a vessel that God can use in this season. Wash me, oh God. Wash me. Purify me. Wash my mind. Wash my ears. Thank you for your word and thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And praise God. I praise God for this time of word on Wednesday. I hope it has been a blessing to your life. And I hope God has blessed your life through the word. If you desire to be a financial blessing to Greater Love Temple, please, ma'am, and please, sir, you can give electronically through Cash App or GPay, or you can mail it in the mail. The instructions is on the screen, and you can see how to sow into ministry in the name of Jesus. We will continue this study of the word. Prayerfully, if the Lord say the same, we will continue it tomorrow on a live, talking about the washing of God, the washing of the water by the word. So tomorrow, meet me in this time 
of the study of the word as we continue our walking through the tabernacle and talking to God. Thanks be unto God for his word. Be blessed, be encouraged, and God will move for you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Have a blessed day in the kingdom and overcome every obstacle that may come your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed.